Okay, dissolving. Okay, so right now you should be familiar with how ionic and covalent compounds dissolve. You watched the video with Tyler DeWitt, and you watched, so both videos by Tyler DeWitt. So let's just get into why like dissolves like. It's very easy. And uh, why um, polar doesn't go in nonpolar. We'll, we'll show you. So right now I've got a polar solvent. So it's a polar solvent. So when you do your water pogo, you're going to remember water is made of chemical bonds, covalent compounds, covalent bonds they share. This side has more negativity because it has excess valence. So this negative part of the molecule forms an intermolecular force with the positive end of the molecule. And again, how do we re review solid liquid gas? How do we reduce these IMFs? We add heat. What happens? They start to expand. Okay, so just so this is just so this is the key, the IMFs. And this right here we call is a hydrogen bond. But it's not a bond, it's an IMF, it's the stupidest term in science. But we call that a, the IMF called a hydrogen bond. Okay. So now let's say we have NaCl. What is NaCl? It is a metal and nonmetal. So it's an ionic compound. So what will it do in water? It will what? Dissociate. So it will break apart. Remember, associate means to come together, dis. They're going to dis each other. Why? Because when they split apart, they're going to keep their full outer shell as a cation and an anion, and they're going to form new IMFs. And therefore, they're going to be surrounded by water. Why? Because when this dissociates, and I'm going to dissociate it right now, so this is going to split. So you've got Na, I'm going to actually split that here so you can see it better. Na positive comes over here. Hold on, we didn't, I didn't get the water yet. And I got the Cl negative over here. So they are fully stable ionic ions. So predict what's going to happen here. This is stupidly positive. More positive than that. So what's this water molecule going to do? Keep its attention to this one? Or change it and take a look and go towards this one? Since this is strongly positive, electronegative, that's next week, it's actually going to say, hey, this has a stronger attraction. So this is going to go away. And the, this water is going to... form a stronger IMF. Sorry, I ran out of room. That's a strong IMF. And then this guy up here will start, we'll see, oh, I'm attracted to the hydrogen, but wait a minute, there's a stupidly positive thing over here. So this guy's going to go flip, and here's an O negative, and here is a really strong IMF. So what happened? This got surrounded because it dissociated, okay? So what's going to happen over here? Hydrogen likes to talk to the oxygen. But this is stupidly charged. So it's enough to kind of flip this around. So now this guy here may turn itself like this. Keep the O negative here. But you got to be careful. You don't want to go too close up there. It form a strong IMF there. This guy is going to flip. So it goes over to here. Crap, this is hard to do upside down. Hold on. And you start to see this is dissolving, surrounding. This is dissolving, surrounding. Did we make a new substance? No, I did not break. Did I break any blue covalent bonds? Did I? Did I? No. When we broke the ionic compound, did they go back as their original atoms, as a reactant? No. They're still stable ions. All we did was rearrange how they're formed. This is a physical change. That's why dissolving is a physical change. So when you have something that's really positive and really negative, um, they dissociate. Okay? That's the first one. Okay. So, let's, so you should understand that. So it all depends. If something's polar, it's got to have charges to make things change. If it doesn't have charges, non-polar, not, nothing's going to change. It ain't going to go in there. They need to have positive and negative ends. Okay, so let's do the next one. Let's throw in CHC6H12O6, and I'm not going to draw that whole thing. That's insane. 
I'm going to make this one a little more simplistic. I'll draw a couple more waters. Okay. Here's an IMF. Here's an IMF. Here's an IMF. So now let's bring in the cobalt compound. Now I'm not drawing this whole thing out. C6H12O6. Now I'm just going to say there's a positive end and a negative end. I'm not going to say exactly where. We don't need to worry about that. The carbon is actually, it's in the middle. So just don't worry about it right now. Now, let's just keep the molecule together. So here we go. But now we have a polar covalent compound. Does it have charges that could form new attractions? Yes. Are they as stupidly positive and negative beyond polar as ionic? No. So they will not dissociate. Instead, they will be surrounded. So this guy comes in here, and you've seen this before, and I'll just draw it like this. So this guy comes in. Okay, I'm going to somehow write upside down, like sideways. C, did I just write 6 and then another 6? Brilliant. C, 6, H, 12, O, 6. There's your negative part. There's your positive part. Here's an IMF here. There's an IMF here. So the, mo the molecule stays together, but still gets surrounded. But it's not stupid beyond polar where it dissociates. And again, don't worry about the acids yet. Just know most of them dissociate. Some dissociate quicker than others. Okay, so, that, so right here, when you have something that's charged, you need, if you have a solvent that's polar that has charges on the ends, it's like magnets, you need something charged to allow it to attract to each other. That's the key. Charge likes charge. No charge likes no charge. Okay? Alright, so we understand that. Okay, so let's do water again. Ah, shoot. Can I curse in these videos? Dude, that'd be hilarious. It's my house, I can do whatever I want, right? Can I curse? Should I curse? That'd be hilarious. Okay. With the phosphorus, man. <laughs> Okay, all right, now, so now here's water again. There's water. There's your IMFs, okay? So now let's put in CH4. Nonpolar. There's no charges here. So we're going to drop it in. This is a nonpolar substance. There's no charges here. What's going to cause these guys to change their arrangement? Something with the charge. This, this doesn't even notice this. They don't mix. So therefore, CH4 is going to go in and go right the heck up on out. A lot of oils are called hydrocarbons. CH compounds. And they're all nonpolar. That's why fats and oils, which are mostly made of hydrocarbons, don't dissolve in water. That's why they form a layer up top. So this will just form a layer up on top. I'll just draw like that. It wants no part of it. Water done. The water's like, what the, what, the, what, the, what the phosphorus is that? Get the phosphorus out of here. Who, who the phosphorus are you? Oh, I've got to watch myself. So they form a layer up top. That's all that is. That's so the nonpolar can't dissolve in the polar. Very simple. Okay? Makes sense? Alright. So let's do this. Let's use, now let's put in a nonpolar solvent. Let's do C6. Uh, let's do, let's do, I want to, I don't want to draw up the structure because these are going to get complicated. Let's do um, C8H18. Actually, I will draw it. This is called octane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oct means eight. Ain means all single bonds. Let's say I have a couple moles of them in here.
Those are H's, by the way. So this is C8H18. Okay, so this is nonpolar. So you ready for this? Let's drop in NaCl. Is there anything charged down here to form a new attraction? No. Goes in, right on up out. So it settles at the top, NaCl. It ain't going to dissolve. Let's try sugar, C6H. Let's try the glucose, C6H12O6. Put a negative there, put a positive there. Don't worry about the exact location. It's got charges. This don't got no charges. Go right on in, go right on out. You want to form a layer up top. Darn it. Put hydrofluoric acid in there. Hydrochloric acid. Stupidly positive, stupidly negative. Has charges. No charges here. Comes right on in, right on out. Does not dissolve. Okay? And finally, hold on, I'm, gonna, I'm looking something up. This is live right now. Um, let's see, nonpolar. I forgot, I think it's Van der Waal. Let me look it up. Nonpolar, nonpolar, nonpolar interaction. I don't know, what is, is it Van der Waals? Ah, I think it's Van der Waals forces. Hold on, let me Google IMF. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell me. I'm going to say, uh, I don't have to look that up. Anyway, get rid of this. Let's put in CH4. There's no charges. Drop it on in, it'll come right down here. And all these, there's a bunch of these, would surround it. Now, what would these interactions be like? There's no charge here, there's no charge here, but they can coexist. But they're weak forces of interaction. Uh, weak IMFs, we'll call them weak IMFs. Weak IMFs. But again, they can coexist together and intermingle. Okay? But they're weak because there's no charges that kind of make those IMFs stronger. So overall, you see that polar likes polar, nonpolar likes um, nonpolar. But let me, let me do one other real life example. Well, let's go back to water. Let's make, you know, I started drinking a lot of carbonated water. Okay, and there's carbonic acid in there. I'm not going to get into that right now. But with soda, your mixes are H2O, which is polar, that's your liquid, and I'm going to put a little L right there, that means liquid, L. You got sugar, which is aqueous, AQ, you've seen that in some equations, that means dissolved solute. And you got CO2 in there in the form of a gas. So I've got H2O, I'm going to use one color right now because I'm... There's your IMS right here. So you have these IMS. You drop in sugar. Sugar can go around in here. Positive, negative. Sugar can be surrounded, but it does not dissociate. Negative, positive. What about CO2? It's nonpolar, but it can kind of coexist because there are some charges right there. So some of it can go in there. But here's the thing. It, it, eventually, it's going to fizzle and go right out. So eventually, what we're going to talk about is how do they get that carbonation into the soda? That's why cans are pressurized. That's why soda bottles are sealed up so they are forced in because eventually they want to get up on out of there because they're a gas at room temperature. And they're going to be less dense than the liquid, and they're going to want to leave. So what they do is they super cool the liquid while they force the gas in, trap it, and we're going to get this the next week. When you open up the soda can, what starts to happen? 
you see go, you see little bubbles go zzz, 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 right on out. Well, what are they in those bubbles? CO2. Why? Because they don't want to be in there because they're nonpolar, right? But how are you going to get them out of there faster? Do you think it would take it would be harder for the carbon dioxide to escape if this was cold or warm? I want you to think about that. What would go flat faster? Cold soda or warm soda? What would the molecules of water in the soda be moving like if they were warm compared to cold? Imagine your CO2 in here. Let's just say your CO2 in here and you're nonpolar and you want to get out. You're stuck in here. You were pressurized, but you're trying to get out. Because you don't want to be in there. You're nonpolar. Eventually you leave, but would it be easier to leave if the molecules were heated up? Or would it be easier to leave if they were cooled down? Think about phase changes. Think about what we said with IMFs when things are cool and IMFs when things are warm. That's something we're going to get into next week, how they make soda. Okay, that's going a little above and beyond. But again, this is nonpolar. But it's pressurized. So you could do that experiment at home. And then I'll ask you this. What happens if you shake the bottle? What's going to happen? Think about escaping that way. All right. I think you got the idea. You guys better be good at this. And then next week we're going to end the concentration. How much can I fit in there? Do I have enough water to surround the sugar? Or will the sugar not, not be enough water and the sugar is just going to settle at the bottom? That's next week with saturated, super saturated, unsaturated, and everything else. Okay? Keep up the good work.